Will I do an update version on how to make dark skin? Are you talking about as far as like um like how to texture dark skin person? If so, um, I can. I don't know if anyone else wants to see something like that, but I mean, I can. I'm gonna start making the rooms for this here shortly. Yeah, um, yeah, just comment after this video, and then um, so just so I can remember to do it. Cause after the stream, um, if I rewatch the video, it won't show the comments. So just comment. Um, you can just DM me. It doesn't really matter. But I can make a tutorial on it. Testing out some stuff right now, seeing how this looks. I just posted a video earlier too. If you haven't, go check that out. Um, I showed you guys how to bring this, how to bring your Blender characters into Unreal Engine in like under three minutes. I had to work on this animation because um, when I jumped the clothing clips through, so I just have to pull this back in Blender. Then re import it. Yo, Carbone, what's going on, man? I may switch this up. You know, it's going to be a horror game, so I may switch this out from um, third person to first person. Just for like a more immersive gameplay. Yeah, it's all modular. I started this about um, four days ago, three, four days ago. I made the character about a couple months ago. I knew I wanted to use it for a game, but I didn't think I was going to actually um, push it further than the character. Carbone's on YouTube, chilling, got back from work, hell yeah. I forgot what you do again. I know you got a job in the industry, I forgot what it was. I think it's, I know it's something with ZBrush, maybe character. Gotta do something about the eyebrows too, and the eyes. But I think it's fine for now. So right now, I gotta make some doors. So let's jump over to Blender. I started working on the elevator too. I can make it operational. So this will be the elevator and the interior. Not just make a little panel to go for the buttons. Do I manually retopo the character? Yeah. I did this character live actually. I live streamed this one on um I don't know if I did it in Discord or YouTube, but yeah, I did this one live. We topo. I 
But I mean, um, if you have a, a base mesh already, you don't have to do the same thing over. We can just shrink wrap it. But um, I wanted to do a, a character course, so I posted. I don't know if you guys watched the course I put up. It's free on YouTube, or you can pay for it on um, Udemy. For some reason, people seem to rather purchase my videos than watch them on YouTube for free. I don't know if it's because of the ads, but yeah. I was a character artist job, but it was a 30-day contract. Got done with it long ago. I just see you rush. Oh, hell yeah. I forgot. Yeah, dude, it's scary. And that, that's another reason was it's a good cushion to work for yourself because um, I know this may not be your... I mean, you said you completed your contract, but I know a lot of people and a lot of my friends that work in the gaming industry out in Austin, they uh, they all, well, at least the majority of them, got uh, laid off because of the stuff that's going on with the government. That's like a... Uh, that's a, a scare, dude. I wouldn't know what to do. Um... Let me actually try something real quick. Um, I textured this as Substance Painter, uh, all these panels, but I want to change it up in this hallway because I made a alternate. Let me see. Let's, let's see. Um, let's say the yellow, hoping in the yellow. Let me go to where I store these at. I have no idea. Right there, let's say game. Ready. Fragments. Ah, uh, gotcha. Why did I get into game development? I got into game development because it's something that I've always um, enjoyed as a child. It was like my escape. And actually, to be honest, I got my degree in animation, a media arts animation to be exact. Get my bachelor's. I could have went the game art route, but I snuck into the game art classes. So it was like I kind of got it for free. And, um, it, you know, it doesn't feel like a job. It's something that I enjoy doing. I can wake up and do this every day until I die and be 100% satisfied. And it's a lot of hard work. Not, not yellow. And it's super competitive. I like the competitiveness of it. I mean, as long as it's not toxic, I think it's good. Good competition. It always pushes you further as an artist. But there's a lot of stuff that I... You know, I wish I did know about like the pipeline as far as like the technical side. I don't know how to code and things like that. So that's my downfall. And that's why I kind of want to keep the teaching job in my back pocket because I'm noticing a lot of people, including France, getting laid off. I'm just looking for a part time contract work for the moment. Hell yeah, I get that 100%. Also, dude, I don't know if you're getting your VA thing, too. So, also check into that. I know you're a veteran as well. Let me see if this works here. So, I just applied this material here so I can have a little bit of breakup because um, looking at my reference here, a lot of hospital corridors um, and different sections of the hospitals are kind of color coordinated. So, you see, like, some rooms will be, like, tannish all one color you see on the left side of the elevator um if you keep going through you see some sections are blue gray for the most part they're all one solid color but in certain areas you'll see that break up where it's like yellow on one side white on one side or it'll have a 
a split in the middle. So like this, for instance, it's green on top, halfway through, and then it's brown on the bottom. Yeah, you guys get it. Like this is a good representation here, as well as here. But yeah, you guys get it. I just got to erase from the VA. Oh, lucky. Lucky. I'm trying to get my VA stuff figured out now. I, I maybe should leave this section here, um, the blue and yellow, but we'll just try it out for, you know, shits and giggles, because this could be like a trippy hallway. So naturally in the game, this will lead to the psychiatric ward, and that's why I kind of made the floor pattern, the basic diner looking checkered background. I thought it made sense. So I was like, eh. And since everything is procedural, it's like, um, I mean, modular, I can just, you know, drag and drop one material and it's going to be applied to the entirety. Just bring it on light really quick so I can see this. And the hotkey to do this, a lot of people don't usually use this hotkey, but it's super dope. Just press and hold down L on the keyboard and click anywhere. It just brings you a light. It's pretty cool. Or maybe I should have kept one side of the wall blue. Let me just jump in here real quick and see what that looks like. Okay, I'm liking this yellow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. This is going in the right direction. Sweet. And the reason I'm streaming so late, I, I didn't expect anyone to actually jump in here. I just wanted to do it because I couldn't sleep. And I was like, I might as well work on the on the game for now. Sweet. So let's do another quick walkthrough. Sorry guys if the stream is extra like blurry. It's because um, I'm rendering this scene. I have Blender open um, and I'm recording at the same time. So it's going to look a little bad on you guys' end. But trust me, it's going to be worth it once um, once I post the devlog, you guys get to see this. It's super plain right now, but this is, you know, two, three days of work. And I'm, what I plan on doing is um, each different corridor is going to lead. Um, it's going to have a different color to kind of, you know, organize it. Now we'll be adding, adding um, all the signs and stuff as well. I'm making everything from scratch. It's not going to be any um, assets. The only thing I'm going to use is maybe the mega scans for the floor and the ceiling. The ceiling. Because uh, there's no point in me doing this in Substance Painter or Designer when I can just grab these uh, quick so mega scans. And I do have a couple more doors. I just don't want to use this same type of door for all of the rooms. It just doesn't, for one, I don't even think it's going to fit because I designed these to be the double doors, as you can see here. And it's way too huge. I could always downscale it, but it just wouldn't make sense. So we're gonna make some doors here in Blender in a second. All right. Let's get out of here. 
here. What percent are you at now, Carbone? Are you at 80? I think last time we talked, you were at 80, I think. Shipping an elevator right now. Oh yeah, I can also make these sliding doors with these doors. And I gotta do bathroom doors. Ah. It'll be fun. You should say again. I was saying, um, <clears throat> what percentage are you at with your VA claims? Looks way too big. So I'll slide this over. I'll bring this one. So let me duplicate this just in case. Oh, yeah, 20%? Shit, well, at least you had something. So, which is... What I want to do is... Make the door... Need to make an appointment to my ankles so I can. Hell yeah. yeah dude, you gotta go for everything, to be honest. be too small. That's the thing about working with these things, man. Uh, making sure. So, in third person versus first person, the spacing matters a lot because one way can seem super claustrophobic and another way could be too, too big. That's why I keep switching between the two so I can get a better uh, scale reference. 
because this doorway, you know, it's a little bit of breathing room. I think it's fair, but in comparison, like this, this character maybe he looks around somewhere around six feet, six one maybe. So it, it may may be okay. It just feels a little too wide for me. But anything smaller than this, it's just a tight squeeze. And there's going to be, you know, ghosts and zombies and stuff like that walking around the environment. And um, I want to make sure they all have enough space to get in, especially if there's going to be a horde. What's the game I'm making? It's a third person, um, like, horror. What do you guys feel about the space? Is this, is this okay for a doorway? Would this be too small or too big? Maybe height wise, I don't know. I'm a perfectionist, so it's like the little details matter to me. I think that it's perfect for the double doors. It's enough space. Creating my unlisted ZBrush touch and editing them to public. Definitely, you should. To be wide. Thanks for the feedback. That's why I just made this one in Blender because I, I felt the the other ones were too too wide. Okay. So since I have this and this is derived from you know um, this mesh. All these fit on one texture sheet. So if I like click on anything on this map right now, so just just look at everything I'm selecting right now from the door frames, uh, even the doors, right? They're all on one UV sheet. So if I like solo it out, press A, they're all part of the same UV sheet. So that's why when I'm making these new doorways I don't have to do the UVs and retexture it because it's going to come uh, you know natively okay this should be good and actually what I can do is even combine these so let me just control J these shift S make sure everything's where it should be and let's say underscore average underscore door underscore wall. Now just export this out. All these modular pieces yeah yeah they all are yep whoa where, where am I at where am I at TLD list, skip game ready for engine environment hospital corridor FBX we will name this Haas oh Always, always remember to select objects only. You don't want to export the entire scene. So let's go back in here. Let's just bring this into the scene. See what we got. Up. 
what's the material for this? Ta-da, I didn't have to texture it or UV this. I am so cool. Jump to our scene. Let's see what we got here. Okay, yeah, this looks a little. Yeah, this looks a lot better. As far as like a standard door, we will get an alternate texture for this as well. And I could just replace these ones with those. Yeah. I still have to make this entire corridor over here. Which is gonna lead to like the NICU. This place is gonna lead to the psychiatric ward. And I wanted this door to be bust out in this direction specifically. Oh, but I have to change the direction. That way, it makes a little bit more sense and tells a better story that maybe this was knocked down where the crazy people, you know, came from. Need some exit signs, water fountain. And we'll have a bathroom somewhere over here. Maybe, maybe. All right, so we need a door now. Yeah, they're all modular. So I can go to detail lighting. You see, I can move all these around. Swap them out. So the cool way to make a door so you don't have to figure out, you know, how big or small something is, you can just derive it from this geometry. I can just select this, control R this. D, right click, separate this. And that way when I select this again, I can get rid of, oh, not that button. I'm gonna isolate this. I'm gonna get rid of those edges I just created because I no longer need them. I just needed this. can extrude I want to leave a little bit of space so if I ever want to um, let's see bring this up just a smidge so if I want to have some light peeking through it just helps it look a little bit more realistic once you bring it to the engine. 
can you take things that are made from blenders using geo nodes? Yeah, you can. You just have to convert it over. Yep, yeah, just convert it to a mesh. Only time I use blueprints so far in the project is when I just swapped out the characters. That's it. I mean, I'll, I'll have to use blueprints um, once I'm done with the level design just so I can make things work properly because um, these doors will open. I want it to be um, at least a point where the character can feel like he can go through any room. And um, what's also dope about this is um, later on, when I get a bit further along, I just have to do two more levels, but they're all gonna be derived from one level. So once I'm done with this, this floor, this floor one, I'm gonna link everything together and duplicate it and just bring it up and I'll bring one down so I can have three levels. Um, and they won't be connected, but they're all gonna play a specific role in this game. And some doors are gonna take you to places outside. So let's say he's going through this corridor, he goes to this room. There's going to be actual room here for the most part for the doors that are open. The ones that aren't open, obviously, it'd just be blocked off. But it's going to be dark. So when you go through, it's going to appear like he's going straight into a dark room. But he's going to come out through maybe a house, a gas station, the woods. It's going to be super crazy. Super crazy. Let's see, brought that down a bit, so I have to raise this back up a little. All right, perfect. I want to isolate this. I do want to reset the scale for this. And I don't need to add bevels on the corners of this. It's no, not that specific. Um, it won't even be noticed by the player. But one thing I did make sure I do it for was um, the corners. So for the corner pieces, if you don't bevel off the corners, it's gonna the light is gonna leak through. And I see a lot of like new environment artists do that when they you know work on their indie games. Because, you know, it's a low budget and most people don't catch it. They just play the game, not for the environment. But I always see it and I just cringe when I see that light leaking through. I saw a YouTuber uh, live streaming the other day and he did it. But I wanted to say something, but it, it wasn't my place. So I just let, let it go. But it's a mistake that I made when I was newer. Uh, I was working at Arcane Studios uh, on the game uh, Redfall. And uh, I was making trash cans. And I was a newer artist at the time. So um, when they gave me the task, I had like, you know, my higher up kind of come over and pick at my desk and, you know, he's complimenting me first before he lets me know, hey, this is not the way you do it. Because, you know, our artists are sensitive about their work and, um, you know, they didn't want to kill my pride, but it lives with me forever. Now I know where I need to add those, those bevels. So, yeah. That's my little spill about the, the light leaks. So since I have this here, let's do an auto UV. Okay, what I wanna do. Just a box, it's super simple. This looks good. I'm gonna downscale this. I wanna derive this and create um, maybe three or four doors. Now, the beauty about doing this with this simple box, right? So it's super simple. There's nothing complex about this at all. Um, what I'll do is, whoa, I wanna do that. I wanna do this. I'll take about one fourth of this uh, UV sheet up duplicate this and since I already have it done I don't have to do it again but let's say we want to get groovy with this thing and start making some fancy doors we can do so 
You can just control R, add a couple edge loops. Um, let's say here, here. Give it a little bit of space between this area. back we have these doors and although this looks okay we can we have the poly count to just bring this up a notch we can extrude these We don't have to get super detailed with these things, but I'd rather have the detail than not. And it really doesn't matter the inside faces because I'm gonna have a, a glass, a piece of glass between this, and I'm gonna add that inside on real. There's no point in me adding it inside a blender when I can just link it inside and duplicate it inside the engine. Why don't the walls have thickness? Because um, you don't you don't need it, right? These are modular pieces that can be swapped out. The poly count's super low, and it's because you know if if you don't see it, it's a waste of you know geometry. The more geometry you have, the more memory is going to eat up. So once you go into the engine, you see. Let's play this really quick. Let's play from here. So if you didn't know that I made those walls paper thin, would you know? All right, let's make this a little bigger. You wouldn't be able to tell because you don't know. You only know because you see it. But if you play games like Call of Duty, uh, Halo, it's, like, it's a trick that we all use. It just helps lighten up the scene because you want the texture to do the heavy lifting. As long as the texture is done good and you can see that detail, that breakup, no one's gonna care. And you get to play your game without any lag. So, yeah. I know you're thinking, okay, what if you go inside one room so, okay, so even look at this. So you know that these are all made of paper, right? Or they're paper thin, all these walls. Let's bring this one out really quick. And let's rotate it around. I want to show you something. So let's rotate this. You see it's, it's super thin. And how come when I play this and I go to the other side, why is there a wall there? It's because what you do is you just duplicate the wall. So I'm just gonna duplicate this really quick to show you how it's done. When you're walking in a room, I have this this way. I didn't take the doors, but whatever. You duplicate it again, and then you just rotate it, line it back up. And then they're so close together, and you have um, the door frame as the breakup, and it hides the seams. So when you play, you only see this. When you come from the other other side, you see this. And then you're seeing super light. Yeah. And that's. That's the illusion, that's the magic behind it. Let me save this before I do something silly. And I'll add some dust and stuff later on. I'll add the VFX closer to the end. But this is how I started off, just like this. So 
I think Monday I'll be posting my first dev log for this game. And you're gonna see, you know, how I started in Blender, created everything, and then put them all on one UV sheet, brought them into the engine one by one, started to build the level up. And by the time Monday comes across, I should have the entire um, environment done. And I just post, if you guys are new to the character design workflow, uh, I just posted a video earlier today where you can see how to um, bring your characters from Blender and to Unreal, as well as how to swap out the Unreal character with your own. And I show you guys how to do that like super quick. It's like under three minutes. I just use the Blender add-on um, Auto Rig Pro. Super cool. But yeah. And then you know, here we are now. I was playing with the physics, <laughs> so I was just drag ragdolling my ragdolling my character around the environment. So to do so, let's go to my character, here's the physics, so once you play, there he is, he's there, yeah, it just Find little things to do to keep yourself sane. Working in this environment, you know, it'll drive you insane. So try to have fun with it. <laughs> Don't be like me, ladies and gentlemen. Be better. So where were we, Blender? So we have two doors. Let's ship D and let's create a third door while we're at it. Cause I want to have one for the bathroom, one for like the hallways, one for the bedrooms. So I'm going to get more reference for these doors. I'll need a gray one. And for the stickers and stuff like that, we'll just use decals later on. Yeah, these are super basic doors. Like, there's nothing really to them. It's too good, man. Yo, what's going on? Thank you guys for stopping by and giving the video a thumbs up. I'm streaming at a random time. I don't typically stream at this hour, but I couldn't sleep, so I just uh, thought I'd do some blending. You know, why not? While we're at it, let's just create, let's see, 32 is too much. Let's go maybe a 14. Well, that's too low, 20. 20 should be good. Let's start making a doorknob of some sort. We do this, we can shift A, let's bring in a UV sphere. See if I can get this even lower without losing too much detail. Should be fine. I'm just makes making a very basic doorknob. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I should use reference, but I'm lazy, so I won't.
I really don't even need this face actually. Let's control A, scale, let's shade smooth. Whatever we put in on real looks real. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, as long as it's done correctly, like my environment doesn't look super realistic. I think it's a good medium. I, this is like the, the kind of quality I, I want to hit as a solo dev artist. You know, um, I think this is fine for like, you know, an in-house type of deal. I may need to do a second pass on my character. I didn't know if I wanted to do a third person or a first person. So in the end, I may end up changing it depending on, you know, the, I guess the, the quality I want to hit. Cause I'm going to have some of the ceiling pieces on the ground. I'm going to have wires, cables, um, baggage, medical equipment all over the place. So depending on how heavy the load is, I may or may not, you know, swap out the character. Make a new one. So for this, um, these are the doorknob and the door handle. It won't be seen, so I don't have to bevel the edges on this. Usually only when the light's gonna be bending around the corner do you wanna have it. So I think um, this is fine. I don't need it. So I won't. And I actually don't need this back face either. Anything that's not going to be seen, you don't want it. And what I'm doing now is I always right click and I go to shade auto smooth. Um, Blender does a really good job at knowing what needs to be smooth and round and what needs to be more hard surfacey. So I take advantage of that as much as I can. Always work in the object level if you're manipulating the geometry you always want to um, press control a and reset the scale or apply the scale that's like the rule of third or rule of thumb I believe they call it Actually, this is supposed to be bigger than the actual doorknob.
We have something nice and basic. Knob seems too big. It could be. Oh yeah, that's way too big. <laughs> Good catch. Usually about a little lower in the middle. Okay, that looks doable. All right, so we got this handle. Let's make one more handle. I want to have variety, so the doors don't look super modular. This one, I guess we could use a cube. And you don't get any cool points by modeling everything yourself. Most people just go and they purchase doors off of some site or whatever, but I'm an artist and I like to just create my own stuff except for the texture sometimes I'll, i will grab some mega scans if need be but one thing to keep in mind when you guys are getting these mega scans is um you don't want just be mindful of the size because these things go from like 8k and up i always get the medium quality because it's still going to be just as good you're not going to be that close to the object most times to even notice it and um, this eats up a lot of memory the bigger the textures are the more memory it takes up so with me saying that let me get out of here i use mega scans for the floor and look at that detail i use the low um, quality as well and it still captured the dust scuff marks And look at that breakup on that reflection of that light. Even this one's low quality. Making something super low poly.
since we have lighting fixtures in place inside Unreal, do we move the light source to be placed as well? Yeah, whenever <clears throat> it makes it more believable, you know, if you add the light fixtures and make the lights aim towards the proper direction. I mean, that's my 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 like theory behind it. That's usually what I do, because right now, in my scene, obviously I don't have any light fixtures. The light source is just coming out of nowhere. It's like, hey, where's that coming from? I'll, I'll probably have a, a light on the floor hanging from the ceiling with wires hanging out in the end just uh, to make it look cool and as well as to change the lighting up. Right now it's too bright. There's nothing going on. I'll probably go into blueprints and I'll make an effect to where the light's blinking just to add to the environment, have it flashing like a strobe light. Or, you know, I'll have some lights on the floor against the wall. I want to have fun with this, and I think you should too. Um, just don't don't be like everyone else and just have the light source hanging from the ceiling with no fixtures or anything. No, it looks cool. Uh, let, let's bump up the bloom really quick. Let's save this. Um, Looks super cool. Looks like a dream. And I can play with the, you know, chromatic um, aberration as well to give it that that super dreamy, realistic look. Makes him look dazed, doesn't it? Look at that. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm tired and I'm streaming. Don't mind my singing. Yeah, you, get, you can get some really uh, interesting effects playing with Unreal. Some would say it's even Unreal. really crank it up obviously this is too much but you know we're just having fun right now which one am I do you guys know also guys if you haven't already give the video a thumbs up as well as be on the lookout for uh, Monday. The first dad vlog is gonna happen. You guys can see um, my entire process so far. And um, obviously, I'm probably not gonna stream tomorrow, so when you guys do see the dad vlog, there'll be a lot more to this instead of a, you know, a bunch of emptiness, no doors. This is, I think, three days of work so far. And I created everything myself, except for the texture on the floors, that was the help of Mega Scans. So uh, turn on the notifications for that. And yeah. Have some fun. Class, I want to change the skeletal mesh. Hey.
guy. She looks like a giant compared to this character. <laughs> Which is fine for me because it makes the, the place fit. Alright, let's go back to this door. I really don't even need that much. Um, actually, I'll go back. I don't, I don't need this. I don't need that many faces. Are you bridging Blender and Unreal or just importing assets the normal way? Um, a little bit of both. I'm just, with the character, I just use the, the plugin to bring it over. But um, the normal way is the efficient way. So you have a lot more um, room for customization. I don't know if I want to add a bevel to this. I probably shouldn't just to save on. Uh, yeah, I won't. I won't forget it. I was going to. And actually, what I'll do is get rid of these. Will this be seen? This won't be seen here. And this one won't be seen. I think this one will be. Good morning, Shoemaker. What's going on, bro, bro? I will just combine these. Let me combine this. Two, drag them over here. Have those two. We can leave those there. So we got the doors done for the most part. I just have to texture those. I'm gonna save this. I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to watch me texture. Everyone's gonna get off and just <laughs> as soon as I start. <laughs> I think I'll, I think it's I think it'd be fair if I make one more door, and I'm gonna make this an old school one. So what I'll do, because I want to have at least you know a variety of four or five different doors to help with the breakup, and so everything doesn't seem super modular. I'm a 3D artist, and you've inspired me to learn Unreal Engine as well. Thanks, man. Your work is really cool. Yo, thanks, Dodge. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Just like I inspired you, someone else inspired me, and you know I get to do this um, and make a living doing so. So that's pretty awesome. I'm not rich, nowhere near being rich actually, but I enjoy what I do, and I don't have to, you know, work places I don't want to work. So let me do this. I 
I think uh, here should be good. And I'll get rid of these ones. Dissolve edge. I'm pretty sure you guys are wondering why I always start off with way too many and then go back. Um, I use it to proportion things, if that makes any sense. Probably doesn't. I guess as long as I know what I'm doing. I guess that's... I guess it makes sense. for studio full time um mostly so i'm a freelance artist so that's where i make the big bulk of my money i do projects for other people like other studios but i don't work for a specific studio because that way i don't have to go to commit to doing a project that i don't want to do um i don't have to wake up at a certain time every day to do that thing it's basically on my own Versus me being contracted out, I can just work for and pick whatever contracts I want to pick. And then I get paid from the YouTube and also like the different affiliates as well as, um, you know, Udemy courses or whatever I have out there. And I have my own my own studio, which is tldstudios.net. If you guys want to go check that out, you guys can do so. Or if you guys want to hire me or work on something, you guys can message me there as well. So let's add one more edge loop at the bottom. Every once in a while I like to get fancy with these little doors. Once I'm done with this, I'll add a, oh, a glass inside of Unreal with like designs on the inside. Yeah, you get the, the freedom and then I get to spend more time at home with my family. So that's always like a plus. I hated commuting like to Austin. That's what most of the games are. Most of the game studios out here in Texas are usually San Antonio. There's some big ones at Houston, but uh, Austin is like the main attraction, like where people go like south by southwest and things of that sort. Um, so let me grab this doorknob. We'll put it here. Hmm. No, we'll grab this one. So in the end, I'll end up only UV unwrapping one of these and I'll duplicate it after I, uh, you know, do that process. I probably should bring my uh, elevator doors over because I'm going to put these all on one UV sheet. So once I go into Unreal, after I bring it to Substance Painter, I can just have a variety of doors to be interchangeable, you know, super quick and easy. So I'll just line this up like so. And this door will have multiple sets. It will be a door set for the restroom and some of the closets and things. All right. I think this is a good place for me to end this. I'm getting kind of tired. We'll do one more walkthrough.
for those that are just joining now. Let me swap back out the character. So next time you guys see this environment, I'll have light fixtures at least, and we'll have more than just this hallway with no doors. One thing's gonna be weird because um, <laughs> this guy's gonna be able to pick up inventory and store things, but he's only in a hospital gown, so where's he gonna put them? I guess that's why the back is open so you can just shove things up there. All right, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video.